come in the name of peace. Even in my darkest hours, I've always seen myself as DC's number one whore. I'll see anything they crank out and either walk away happy or rethink how I choose to spend my money. I mean, at least it's better than getting the same fucking movie every damn month with Marvel, and don't get me wrong, they do have a good formula, but every once in a while it doesn't hurt to try new things, and while it may come with more cons than pros, DC has that in spades. However, there's still one medium that, to this day, DC has reigned supreme the animated films. Now, just to be frank, Marvel has pumped out some good stuff before, mainly to do with Hulk for some reason, but once Iron Man came out, they completely ditched that area of content faster than my father ditched my front doorstep. I will do a tier list on all of these in due time, but for now, I want to discuss my 10 favorites. And remember, if you disagree with any of my placements, you're wrong. Let's go. Do I look like a friggin' bat to you? Huh? Hear me out on this. Batman vs. TMNT is everything you would want from this kind of crossover. It has great action, it's funny, and has tons of cool ideas and callbacks for longtime fans of each property. Just the idea of the Batman family plus the Ninja Turtles having to go up against Batman's rogues gallery with the element of them being mutated is fucking amazing. There's really not much else to say, it's just great at what it sets out to do, and I don't think a single idea was wasted. Cowabunga. What? Number 9, Justice League Dark Apocalypse War is the final chapter in the DC AMU. Darkseid is back and in short he wins for a little. A lot of people really don't like this movie and honestly I can see why. It's pretty crazy that they had the balls to go as dark as they did. People die in this film and I don't mean like they're dead dead, I mean like they're dead dead. It's both sad and funny that the body count of this movie practically reaches the ceiling, but after a while it just becomes monotonous and only really serves as shock value. These films were not making as much of a profit as they would if they were standalone films, so this project was basically literally meant to kill the universe. After all is said and done, the movie ends how it started, with another flashpoint. So essentially, all the relationships and characters we've gotten to know if you stuck with this series are essentially erased. So even after all that, why do I like it? Honestly, this movie is a blast, the pacing is phenomenal, and seeing everyone who's left come together and go on this impossible mission was fucking riveting. Constantine is amazing, Raven is amazing, and Damien is at his absolute best here. His arc is complete and he's actually a competent and a great hero. Darkseid vs. Trigon, are you kidding me? This movie may be terrible, but at the same time, it's a masterpiece. I like it guys, I'm sorry. I can't help it. Oh, for fuck's sake. Azeroth, Metreon, Wonder Woman 2009 is probably my favorite depiction of the character. It felt like they completely nailed her being both a stoic warrior, yet still human. Steve in this movie, while he's no Chris Pine, is still very good. Tons of people like to complain and say he's exactly the sexist pig the Amazons were warned about, but now I know this may come as a surprise to some of you, but maybe that was the Point? Both him and Diana go through their own arcs and by the end come to an understanding of one another as well as each other's respective worlds. I bet you would have acted differently if I were a man. You know what? I've had just about enough of listening to you go on about how terrible men are. You met your first man, what, like 15 minutes ago? And you think you have us all figured out. But not everything a man does is to further some misogynistic agenda. And I didn't save you because I thought you were some damsel in distress. I saved you because, because I care about you, Diana. I really respect them for tackling an important subject matter that makes sense in the context of the story. I also like to think this entire movie was based off this one Dave Chappelle skit. Normally I hate superheroes. Not because they never help out black people. Mm -mm. One woman has a golden lasso that makes you tell the truth. She's gonna catch a bad guy. Gotcha! Oh! Nice tits. <laughs> what other depraved thoughts must you be thinking? God, your daughter's got a nice rack. The script, I think, is this film's biggest strength. My only complaint is that some side characters feel extremely underdeveloped and kind of pointless, but overall a fantastic Wonder Woman story. It's not perfect, but at least it's better than- <laughs> Batman Superman Apocalypse is the story of Supergirl and her learning to fit into a new world with the help of her cousin Superman along with Batman and Wonder Woman. This film is some of the best action in a DC film to date, whether it's Diana and Barda vs. the Female Furies or Superman and Supergirl vs. Darkseid. The animation in this is fucking spectacular. It's a very simple story, but it works so well. Supergirl's arc felt very fresh. I love the idea of her training on Themyscira and Jesus Christ, Darkseid was on some hood shit in this movie. The film was literally over and my man was just waiting in Superman's house just to throw some more hands. I'm honestly surprised he didn't go after Batman first, cause, I mean, let's be real, he kinda made Darkseid his bitch. 
they've been activated. Impossible. The arming code is encrypted. I broke the code and reprogrammed them. You're bluffing. Omega Lambda 7 XL9. That sounds like a bluff to you? I'm lumping these two together because I watched the deluxe edition and let's face it, they're both amazing. I think part two is superior as it ties up everything that was set up in part one exponentially well, but part one was still a phenomenal setup. And even though I watched both parts back to back, it never once lost me. It is some of the best Batman content I have ever seen. The animation, solid. The story, amazing. The voice acting, perfect for the most part. If I had even one complaint, it would be that I feel Robin could have used more development, but even then, she's fine as it is, and everything else is just on a whole other level. His conflict with Superman completely shits on Dawn of Justice in nearly every regard. I want you to remember the one man who beat you. And his final battle with the Joker is something I don't think I'll forget anytime soon. See you in hell. <laughs> Doom is my ideal Justice League movie. The lineup of villains may not be my favorite, but what saves it is the writing and the tone. It sees the Justice League being apprehended by the Legion of Doom as each individual member of the team either straight up loses or gets outwitted by their respected villain. We later find out the methods the villains used were all plans that were stolen from Batman in the event that any member of the League would turn evil, and if you ask me, I think that's pretty valid. The Justice League is under attack. By whom? By me. It also introduces Cyborg, who acts as the underdog in the story and by the end earns his place at the table of the Justice League. This is a really solid story that plays into the strengths and weaknesses of each character, and the ending really ties the whole thing together. If the League ever did go over to the wrong side, I want there to be somebody I can trust to keep the planet safe. Even from me. I do think that this film was better made than its predecessor, but the next film is one that I simply enjoy a lot more. Strike me down, Zeus! You don't have the ball. Crisis on Two Earths, to put it simply, fucks. It's another movie that deals with the idea of the multiverse, before that was all the rave, but it does it in such compelling ways. It follows a good Lex Luthor seeking help from the Justice League to face their evil counterparts from another universe. We have evil Superman, evil Green Lantern, British Flash, evil Wonder Wow, hold on. <laughs> All of these are fun antagonists, but none of them come close to Owl Man. Making billions of choices, creating infinite Earths. I love this movie. It's not afraid to delve into the serious questions and implications. If there's infinite universes, does anything truly matter? It's super engaging and gives wonderful moments to most of the cast. Animation and combat is pretty much flawless. My only issue is that I wasn't really feeling Batman's voice in this one that much, but even then the dialogue is so good I'll give it a pass. I can't recommend it enough. There is a difference between you and me. We both looked into the abyss. But when it looked back at us, you blinked. Flashpoint Paradox was the first movie to kick off the DCAMU, and to this day remains easily the best movie with the bunch. After a while, the movies that took place in this universe started getting really uninspired and lazy with things like art direction and character arcs, with some exceptions. This is not the case here whatsoever. Not only does the film look amazing, but this is one of the best stories DC has ever put out. It's without a doubt Flash's best story, and one that they're trying to adapt with the new upcoming live action movie, but we'll see how that turns out. I know I'm excited. Much like Crisis, it does deal with alternate reality shit, but instead of characters simply going from good to evil, it's much deeper than that. The Flash runs so fast that he warps reality and things change for the worse. Batman is now Thomas Wayne, his father, who's an alcoholic and uses guns, and and yes, he's just as amazing as he sounds. Don't worry, friend. Everything's gonna be okay. I thought heroes never lied. Instead of Superman landing on a farm and being raised by the Kents, he's confiscated by the military and taken advantage of. His story is probably the most tragic, I can't even lie, it pains me to see soups like this. Wonder Woman is now a treacherous dictator who gets into it with Aquaman, basically Ocean Hitler this time around. Jesus fuck this man is swole, which causes an all-out war. I was protecting myself. Yet you wear her helmet like a trophy. No, a warning. <laughs> You get to see a ton of DC Legacy characters outside of the Justice League, and the movie itself is just super well-rounded. Flash goes through hell and back to fix what he's done, all while having to put up with the reverse Flash in the process, who is fucking amazing in this movie. At this point, I can't even consider him a villain. He's just the world's biggest hater, and it's absolutely hilarious. It was me, Barry.
I nutted in your dish soap so instead of simply cleaning the plates, you were dousing them with Eobard sauce. You're a madman. Batman Beyond was and still is the shit. It's probably my favorite Batman show. I could go on and on and on about just how much I love this series as well as this movie, but I'll keep it simple. This film basically has everything. Terry McGinnis is the new Batman in the future who has to face the OG Joker. This is easily the most intriguing and well-written aspect. By itself, the movie is still great, but would truly elevates it is definitely the 10 minute flashback within the movie. It follows the OG Batman and Batgirl trying to save then Robin Tim Drake in the story of how the Joker dies, and it is, dare I say, perfect? It's one of the best Batman stories ever within another great Batman story. I love Terry McGinnis, I love the animation, and Mark Hamill's Joker is and forever will be an absolute unit. But before I discuss my number one pick, as I'm sure y'all will never guess what it is, here are some honorable mentions. Mask of the Phantasm, The Death of Superman, Batman Assault on Arkham, Batman vs. Robin, Green Lantern First Flight, The Long Halloween Parts 1 and 2, Batman Superman Public Enemies, and All-Star Superman. Okay, we good? Alright, and the number one movie is it's Under the Red Hood. Literally, what the hell were you expecting? This movie, to this day, has yet to be dethroned, and I can't say it isn't for good reason. Return of the Joker is fantastic, but you could at least use some prior knowledge of Batman Beyond before seeing the film, as such it doesn't really stand on its own. Under the Red Hood is not only an amazingly straightforward story, but it is my favorite Batman storyline I've ever seen or read. Just the idea of a Robin instead of turning out like Nightwing ending up as the epitome of everything Bruce himself stands against is enough to make a dead man splooge himself. Call that shit ghost busting. The Joker in this movie is also a top 5 Joker for me. He's probably the most sadistic he's ever been in animated fashion. I mean, it opens with the Joker beating a child with a crowbar. That should really tell you everything. Batman's morals and beliefs are pushed to their absolute limit here thanks to Jason, so much so that you might even side with Jason if not for his drastic methods. Something as simple as him using guns is enough to know how far he slipped away from the Cape Crusader's wing. Almost everything here is flawless. The voice acting perfect, the animation perfect, if I had even one solitary complaint, I think Nightwing's outfit here looks like booty hole, nevertheless the movie hasn't been and will probably never be beaten. It fucking rules. Are you kidding me? This rocks! Come on old man, we've got bad guys who need chasing. This is the best day of my life. I've grown up with DC feature films my entire life, and recently I've devoted my time to binging as many of them as possible to make a new upcoming tier list, giving my thoughts on most if not all of them. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out that one when it comes out, and with that, we end things here. Hope y'all enjoyed, Bye bye At times I recline way back and forth stacks with relations To wrap my conversations about the devils we be lacing in the revolution Be enormous how I'm pooping My mind has been in battle since birth That's why I'm puffing nails and juicing Like a man in arms you're pooping Planning my attack on the